Thanks so much for joining us here at noon. A break in the rain during your lunch hour, but only for a while. We are in for another round of heavy rain and storms possible later this afternoon. Christina San Juan is tracking it hour by hour when it'll get to our area. Yeah, not too much longer here, Brooke. It's really kind of a repeat of what we've been seeing. Hey, what all week long? Right. This is about <laughs> the fifth day in a row. We're sick of it, right? Uh, well, the good news here, though, is that that severe weather risk is low, albeit it's not zero. So we're still going to be, of course, paying very close attention, particularly off to the east of I-65. That's where we do have the greater chance of perhaps an isolated strong wind gust. Uh, of course, the torrential rainfall that's been coming with these storms all week long and and small hail also cannot be ruled out. But nonetheless, just a level one of five on that severe weather potential scale again off to the east of I-65. As we look across the radar, we do have that line that's just now starting to push into the far western Indiana that'll continue its trek toward our neck of the woods here over the next couple of hours. Expect it around Tell City here in about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, Jasper will be near you uh, probably in about 30 minutes and continue to work down to the southeast. And this is just going to set the tone for what we can expect for the rest of the afternoon and into the early evening hours. Here's a screenshot here on Futurecast around three o'clock. I think that's probably going to be the busiest time of the day when it comes to the widespread coverage, but you can kind of see uh, just how scattered it is and it does continue until about seven or eight o'clock tonight, but then we'll dry out and actually it's going to shape up to be a gorgeous weekend ahead that I'm excited to tell you about. I'll do just that in just a bit, Brooke. All right, Christian, taking a look at that LG &E and KU outage map right now. We're just a little more than 3,000 people across Kentucky in the area with a majority of those in Jefferson County from yesterday's storms. Downed trees caused a good amount of damage after those storms. Luckily, no one was hurt. Our Alexander Goldberg and photojournalist Aspen Hester take a closer look. Take a look again. A lightning bolt strikes right over the Abraham Lincoln Bridge in downtown Louisville. Severe storms moving through in winds that would knock down trees. Just take a look at this red tent right here at Slugger Field. In St. Matthews, a harrowing escape. This pickup driver was heading down Grandview Avenue when this giant tree crushed his truck bed. A close call for the driver who was behind the wheel when it fell. Former WHIS 11 producer Larry Ledford recorded this video moments after the tree fell. But in Jefferson Town, the storms led to property damage. Like I said, every time we go to leave or we pull up, I'm like, look at our cute little house. And and now look at it. So it's. It's kind of slapping the face. J-Town resident Sierra Eds believes a lightning bolt is responsible for this trunk that came crashing down at around 5 p.m. A couple streets down, a backyard garage also crushed. The storms caused severe damage like you can see behind me, but if you look up there, power lines dangling. Numbers peaked at around 15,000 outages for customers around Louisville today. This J-Town resident says the tree took down power and data wires with it, and because of the damage severity, it could take a while before the lines are reconnected. Alexandra Goldberg, WHAS 11, on your side. And don't forget, you can always stay weather aware by downloading the WHAS 11 app. You can use the QR code there on your screen. Anchorage Public School just delayed its first day by about two weeks due to mold concerns. In a letter to families, Superintendent Karen Solis said heavy rains and roof leaks last week led to the discovery of mold. And while waiting on test results and cleanup, they are limiting people in the building. Today, she asked the board and Kentucky Department of Education to allow the school to have an alternate calendar for the rest of the school year, which includes delaying their start date while keeping the last day of school the same. That was a main focus um, that I did have was keeping within the frame of our as close to the frame of our original calendar while keeping our um, our breaks and things of that nature in the same order. Anchorage was supposed to start next week, but instead will go back on August 26th. 
A mother charged with the murder of her five-year-old son was just ruled incompetent to stand trial and will be sent to a psychiatric facility. Dewan Anderson is charged with killing her five-year-old son, Cairo Jordan, and stuffing his body inside of a suitcase in rural southern Indiana about two years ago. Police found her just back in uh, March over in California and brought her home where she's insisted on representing herself. Doctors ultimately determine Anderson is not competent or can assist in her defense. She's not expected back in court until she's gone through mental health treatment at a state hospital facility. Her trial was originally scheduled for this October. Clark County has approved a new ambulance service as its primary provider for the next three months. Heartland Ambulance will provide four ambulances and New Chapel will provide two. For the first time, the CEO of the embattled New Chapel EMS is offering an explanation of how everything's unraveled. He told our Focus reporter Travis Brees how Jamie Knowles' alleged crimes majorly shook this organization, now trying to rebuild back public trust. We were lied to for years. Matt Owen has worked at New Chapel EMS since 2011. This is his first lengthy interview about the department and recent fallout. He was thrust into the CEO role in February because the past leader, Jamie Knoll, was facing 25 felonies. Now it's 31. And I didn't realize this until looking back in hindsight, but we were always kept segregated from each other. Anybody who was important in a leadership position here we weren't built up as a team. We were built up to play our functions and be at odds with each other. Um, and that was a constant part of the problem with the culture here. Noel and his family are accused of taking over $3.6 million from the organization over a five year span, spending it on trips to Florida, Rolex watches, vintage cars, a plane, his daughter's college tuition, paying off timeshares, and much more. You asked about red flags. You know, when I came to know Jamie, Jamie already had cars. Jamie already had money. Jamie has always been this big figure in the community. No one ever thought that it was too many things for one person to do? I don't think so. And I think Jamie was very careful about being very uh, to himself. New Chapel also had no internal board or treasurer until August 2023. Owen admits he and Noel were close friends, calling him a mentor. Noel helped Owen get elected to Jeffersonville City Council, donating almost 3,200 to his campaigns and serving as his campaign treasurer in 2015. I think every Republican benefited under Jamie Noel's chairmanship. Um, but all of that benefit was based on a fraud. These lost resources and the nationwide paramedic shortage are hurting New Chapel. Thursday night, the county commissioners took a bite of the organization's largest remaining contract, bringing in Heartland Ambulance to help cover the county. Owen is confident New Chapel will remain in Clark County, even if it's a smaller role. While he's only led the department for six months, he now sees all the questions he could have been asking. Do you want to say, I'm sorry, do you want, or do you feel like you don't have to apologize? I don't know that I am sorry because there should have been something that got this attention well before it devolved into what it is. And I'm somebody who was very close to, to Jamie and professionally and personally and I didn't see these things. Jamie Knowles attorney Larry Wilder did not respond to a request for comment for this story. In Jeffersonville with photojournalists Elijah McKenzie and Jessica Farley, Travis Breeze, WHAS 11 on your side. Now in another development, Jamie Knowles wife Missy just filed for divorce. As you've heard, her husband is charged with 31 felonies from theft, tax evasion, corrupt business practices, Coast employment and money laundering. Misty is charged with theft and tax evasion, and her daughter Casey is also facing charges. Indiana State Police have largely focused on how all three use those credit cards belonging to local fire departments, racking up almost $4 million in personal charges with items and travel. After petitioning for divorce, Misty also asked a judge to combine her case with her daughter's. 
Today, the Kamala Harris campaign is expected to announce a new fundraising record, bringing in what it expects to be more than $300 million for the month of July. She's also expected to announce her VP pick in the coming days, and we're anticipating to hear any time now that Harris has received enough delegate votes to be the official Democratic nominee for president. We'll keep you posted when that happens. Meantime, Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir is still in the running for the slot of her VP pick. He was in Oklahoma City last night campaigning at a fundraiser for the state's Democratic Party. The governor dug into Donald Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, bringing back comments he made in 2020, calling Democratic leaders childless sociopaths who don't have a direct stake in this country. They're trying to say, oh, he didn't mean it. He didn't mean to call you a sociopath. I think most people mean it when they call somebody a sociopath. Bashir is one of a few being vetted for the VP spot. We have learned the governor has freed up much of his schedule. Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman is now scheduled to appear in his place today at an event in western Kentucky. Bashir also picked up a major endorsement this week from the United Auto Workers Union. The UAW president, Sean Fain, says Bashir is one of their two top choices to be vice president. The other choice was Minnesota's Governor Tim Waltz. We spoke with the UAW local 862 president, Todd Dunn, who says it should be Bashir. He is the only candidate that I see right now that is going to fight for working men and women that is going to change the paradigm and the thought process when it comes to thinking red or blue and getting back to where we need to be. And that's ground zero, working together to make America better, you know, one day at a time. The Harris campaign said it will hold its first rally with the new vice presidential nominee on Tuesday in Philadelphia before launching a four-day battleground tour that includes Michigan and Arizona.